Hi there, and welcome back to Triplicate. And on our narrow boat, Bonnie Mary, we have uh, some LED lights, and these are ones with the driver chip, they're not just with the normal resistor and three in series combination. And this one is faulty and it got even more faulty as I took it out because there's a little inductor there and I broke that off uh, so I ordered another inductor that one oh, which worked but I found didn't fit in the light fitting because it's too big so I bought some more inductors which are nearer the size of the originals and now it's working. I'm trying to point it at the camera that way around. Now these lights have no polarity on the connection. Oh god, I'm going to break that wire off. Um, because originally I think they were halogens, and you could connect them either way around. It didn't matter. They were filament, and I think indeed they were supposed to run off. Um, AC but these run off DC but to run either way around they have a uh, rectifier in so if I connect it the other way around Can you see that? Shut that light off. Super dim! And I think that's the way around it goes, which is why I thought it was faulty and took it out in the first place. So because it works one way around and the other, that's a reasonable assumption that the fault lies with the rectifier, which is those four diodes there. Right, so we have plus minus and minus plus, that means just the way the leads are, so that's plus minus and that's minus plus. And we have D1, D2, D3, D4, they're all the same way around. So we are going to measure the di the voltages across those diodes uh, both ways round and make a table. And I have a known good one, so we're then going to do the same with that, which makes your life a lot easier if you've got something to compare it to, to its known good. And then we are going to try and figure out which diode or diodes are faulty. Okay, let us Get stuck in. So we want plus minus, that's plus there and minus there and that. Yep, you can see from the light on the whoops on the paper. And I'm just using the bench power supply set to 12 volts. And you can see by the light on the paper that that's working that way around. So, I'm going to measure on that way around because I think that's forward biased. Minus 330 millivolts. For D1, plus 11.5 for D2, we're just going to have to remember which units we're using here, should do it all, it offends my physics education using random units in the table. So that's plus 330 or 320. 
three, two, five. And D4 is minus 11.5. So let us swap the power over to the other way. go you see that's glowing dim so we're going to do the same again eleven point seven five for d one Minus 200 millivolts for D2. Minus 5.9 volts for D3. And, come on. plus 5.9 for D4 hmm so now I am going to do exactly the same for the good one and I shall do this and write them down bring you back when I've done it because it's an exactly the same procedure okay so I've done that um, and here you can see we either have 11 and a half volts across or 300 and 10 20 30 millivolts now that's forward and it's a 12 forward biased diode because the Schottky diodes and that's a reversed bias diode which has obviously most of the supply of it so that's what we would expect we're in assuming this is a bridge rectifier so these 5.9 volts here would indicate that one of the diodes is faulty okay so I have buzzed these diodes out and I have a circuit for them so Let's zoom in a little. This end of diode 4 goes to the left hand pin and so on. Uh, and I have a circuit and the diodes are marked at one end. Let's see if we can see that and they are SS14 and they're marked at the S end to catch the light just right well I can't see it on the screen but maybe you can see it on the the actual video anyway the, you can see the SS14 which is the part name and the end of the that the S is is the cathode and here's the uh, data sheet for the SS14 it's uh, rated 40 volts 1 amp and if we go down here we'll see the there we are, cathode band, so it's got a band on the cathode which is where I got the information from in the preceding bit of video so that's how they're laid out and that's the stripe, the cathode on each and that's the left and right pins so they are wired
like that and like that and since we know how our bridge rectifier works we assume that goes to plus and that goes to minus so okay a problem occurs when the left is minus and the right is plus and D2 and D4 should then be conducting so D2 and D4 so D2 where am I? D2 is actually okay that's got 200 millivolts because very little currents flowing through so the voltage so the 200 millivolts instead of 310 but D4 should have a similar should have 300 or 30 millivolts and it has 5 volts across it so we suspect D4 is faulty so shall we um, pick the right one which may or may not be that one I know of course yep the faulty one has a slightly smaller inductor on it um, shall we change D4 out on that um, on this light and see if it works thereafter okay so we've decided D4 is faulty which is that one so we want to replace it and I do have a small bag of diodes which are pretty cheap so we will try and get out of the bag there they are um, and this is something new for me trying to capture surface mount soldering on camera and considering this camera's designed to film me nearest and dearest on the beach it's doing pretty well to get anywhere near doing this job so this is the little one and just about tweezers I do not know where I got these tweezers from but they're the ones I use all the time and I do did buy a complete set of little electronic tweezers which I never use I use these and these uh, let's see if we can get them so you can see them most electronic tweezers have pointed ends but I find they get bent and these are quite tough on the end so they don't get bent and also most electronic surface mount electronic components are rectangular like this and because they're flat bladed they're good for picking them up it's my hand in the way of that yeah okay well we're going to see what happens right so first we need to get that off which is a bit of a problem you can't find your solder D4 right oh well it's not D4 right so to get D4 off we need to unsolder both ends at the same time and we only have one soldering iron so we have to apply the soldering iron to each end quickly and hope that this end stays molten while we're melting that end and to that end it counterintuitively since we're taking it off we actually want to flood it come on with solder and the bits of it cruddy uh, all the time while keeping this in the sight of the camera Come on. 
Right, here we go. Right there we're going, we're going. Come on. I thought we had it then. It's because it's so hard to get the iron in. Bend the capacitor out of the way. This component's junk anyway, so it doesn't matter if we overheat it. There we go. Get that end in. Good and hot. Right, that's got the old one off. Now we want to get all this excess solder off here, off of here. And I do not ever use solder suckers, I find they're complete rubbish. They just clag up and they move when you let go of the, when you press the trigger. What I use is this stuff. Uh, Desolder braid, which is just basically co braided copper with lots and lots of flux on. Um, so when you melt the solder, it all wants to go onto the braid rather than stay where it is, we hope. So here we go again. Right. There we go. Ouch, that's hot. Have we trashed the pad? I don't think so. No, oh yeah, I <laughs> think you even got a diode symbol underneath it. Are we still in the camera frame? Yep. And the other end, we want a bit of solder on the bit, otherwise, it won't melt. Come on. There we go. There we go, that's good enough. And we've got all the solder off, so it's time for the new diode. I shall just look at that with my super duper magnifier just to check everything is all well and the pads aren't wrecked and the tracks. And then we'll put the new diode on. The joys of surface mount. Get in the right. I move the old one well out of the way. We don't solder it down again. Right there we go. Now, okay. So we had a memory card run out problem. Uh, so what you've missed is I've run some solder on that pad there okay now the problem with soldering these down is that uh, these are very light and solder has a very high surface tension so you can find that you've perfectly positioned and it's come away with the iron when you've removed the iron so this is what I do I run a blob of solder on one side and if it was a chip with say eight legs I'd do one corner and then that's good. bit of solder on the iron and hold the Component down with the tweezers. Come on. There we go. That's down, that's out, and that's held it. That's in place. And providing we don't heat it up too much and remelt that side, we still are. Oh. 
There we go. It is not easy keeping this in shot. Okay, so we're now going to solder this side. Come on. There we go. And now what I like to do is go back and re-solder this side just in case it got dry jointed because we didn't put any flux on it when we soldered it down. So there we go. So that's down. And it's the wrong way around. <laughs> okay. Comes of trying to film and solder at the same time. No matter. Off she comes again. Right, well it's on. It's on at a bit of a wacky angle, but there we go. Should be alright. Um, so, always check what you're doing and the wire's falling off. Um, because you only get a limited chance really. The more you start taking things off and putting things back on again, the pads, the glue that holds the PCB tracks and pads to the to the circuit board starts going and the pads start lifting and you're probably looking at a a yes and a failed PCB right Okay, so we are going to put me back up the top as it were and see if that works. Okay, let's test her out. Firstly, let us turn the current limit down to zero. and try it this way around hmm well there's a flash so as the current limit comes down and there we go 12 volts looking good and you can see it's shining on the desk I don't want to shine it straight at the camera right so let us take the current limit back down Try it the other way round. And a flash as the current limit kicks in. So, yeah, and there we go. You see bright shining on the bench. So that's good. That works. So that is fixed and ready to go back on the boat. Okay, and when I did the little video on the electrical systems on our Bo Bonnie Mary, I uh, had a bit of finger trouble when doing the uh, engine compartment section of the video and failed to video it. So I had another go and successfully recorded some video this time. Uh, so I'm going to just tack it on to the end of this video. So here it is. Okay, so when I did my original walk around Bonnie Mary's electrical systems, I had some finger trouble on the camera when I did the engine hole footage and it, well, I didn't take the engine hole footage. So, uh, for the tack on the end of this video, um, I have another go at it. So, this, this is actually a, a thing for chopping things off the propeller, which I'm using as a pointing stick. This, this Bonnie Mary's engine, which is made by Beta Marine, it's actually a Kubota um, one and a half litre diesel engine that's been marinized. It's got a water cooled manifold and it's got two alternators. So that is the original alternator fit, fitted to the Kubota engine. And that 
is just used for charging the starter battery and this is a big alternator which is I think 100 amps uh, which is used for charging the domestic batteries uh, so the batteries are in these cases so that, end, that is the starter battery which is a, a battery designed to crank a diesel engine and these are two deep cycle batteries designed to be pretty much fully discharged without harm uh, and are to keep all our electrics going and they're connected in parallel which I always thought was something you didn't do with lead acid batteries but always happens on boats so there you go and this is all the battery wiring nice big fat wires you can see down there <laughs> for lots and lots of amps and down here it's the bane of my life this connects the engine harness via a multi-cord cable there up to the instrument panel up there the door of the cover flapping in the way and that connector is just push in it doesn't latch and a number of times I've caught it with my foot when I've been doing something down here got out closed the hatch put the key in and absolutely nothing's happened because the instrument panel's not connected to the engine and I keep trying to think of a way of tie wrapping it together so it won't fall apart, but it still does. It's really the only annoying feature about the engine setup in this boat. It's utterly reliable and yeah, simply chugs along. And last thing, that's the bilge pump down in the bottom there, and you see it. Well, it was originally glued to the bottom of the boat with silicon, and finally came up. So now it's held in with a a metal, a wooden, hastily constructed bracket and a clamp and one day I'll make a proper mount for it and that's about it go on, shall we get the keys and just fire her up okay, see we're connected to the shore because we're in the, back in the boat club so which has got spun around, I could move it back but it would just spin around again. So that's on, you see that light comes on, the wind is blowing A the door and B the boat. So that is heater plugs, you see the voltage goes down and We're done. Say goodbye, Minnie. Come on, look cute. <laughs> look cute. You want to go for another walk? No. No, you don't, do you? Uh, well, that's about it for this video. So, uh, for now, it's uh, goodbye from Triplicus, home of interesting electronics and uh, sometime narrowboating. Goodbye. <laughs>